So you've made it into the land of self-publishing books. Well, congrats. But really, there's so many choices. We have ebooks, we have print books and paperback and hardback, and then we have audible or audiobooks. So which one is better? So today we're going to talk about how to make money ebooks versus print books versus audiobooks. Oh my. Ooh. Stay tuned. Welcome to Self Publishing with Dale and Kelly. And if you want to learn more about how to publish your own books, then make sure you subscribe and turn your notifications on to get all of our latest videos. Can't hardly it's already, I can't believe it's already been a week since our last broadcast, and boy, we had a lot of fun and a lot of great comments. So we appreciate you guys doing that. Those of you watching the replay know that we are still paying attention to you. So drop some of those comments, any kind of questions, concerns. We'll hear those out, and if you happen to show up late to a live stream, don't fret. If you got questions or concerns, you could still be able to post those things after the stream, and we'll try to address those the best that way that we can. Today is going to be a little bit more interactive, so if you do have questions, post those there, and we'll be able to get to those. Also, those of you in the live chat, remember, there is a feature that's called Super Chat. What's Super Chat, Kelly? We get money. We get money. <laughs> That's a really good way to put it. <laughs> awesome way. She upsold us on that one. Uh, so at any rate, Super Chat is, it works like this, okay? There's this little dollar sign inside the chat area. If you click that right there and you make a donation towards the channel, it will boost that exposure of your question and we'll get to those as soon as we can. And uh, the nice thing is it goes towards upgrades like these nice little lavalier microphones this beautiful little monitor here, and here very soon, within the next few weeks, you're going to see a complete upgrade in all of the live streams as well as the future pre-recorded videos that are going to be launching starting this March. We're very happy that we have a sponsor for today's live stream, and it is our good friends over at Book Doggy. Book Doggy has quickly become the most effective new ebook promotion site in the industry. Check out their new free video feature. Head over to bookdoggy.com slash four dash authors. Once again, that's bookdoggy.com slash four dash authors. The uh, video thing is a pretty cool little feature. They actually have their own YouTube channel now, and uh, those of you that take advantage of that can have that featured over there. So make sure you get a hold of them and ask them a little bit more about those details. Speaking of Book Doggy, should we tell them? Should we should we entice them? Or should we save it to the end? Oh, till the end. We're going to tell you guys yeah. at the end about a massive, and I mean, I'm not going to say this in the, in the lightest, but a massive, big announcement. Right, this is going to be huge, and it's going to be something that's going to benefit you, the viewers, whether you're a subscriber or not. This can make a huge difference in your self publishing business this year. So, you're going to want to stay tuned till the end. We'll mention that right as we're starting to wrap things up. So, in any event, let's get things kind of popping and started. So, um, this next Thursday, February the 8th at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we are going to be talking about Create Space versus. KDP paperback in 2018. There have been some drastic changes to create space over the last six months and one that just happened. And it's it's kind of a telltale sign, or excuse me, a telltale sign of what's going down. I know Kelly and I had a great conversation about that. And KDP paperback is starting to assimilate new changes and features that were formerly on create space. You want to find out more details about that? Make sure you join us next live stream Thursday, February the 8th at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Turn your notification on so that way you don't miss these live streams. What's going on in the chat? Who's here? I see Kim here in here. Kim, Kim's here. Kim here is here. I, I thought you forgot about us. I haven't seen you for a long time, so thank you for stopping. Wow. Me. Jeez, turn, turn, <laughs> turn on a little bit of that guilt factor there. It's not a guilt. I just thought she forgot about us. Yeah, yeah she's, she's back around. Uh, Monique, K. Wheeler, J Cutie Pie, A Dapper Dan Man. Maybe that, I don't know who that is. Maybe you're Dan. Hello. Uh, Eileen Smith. Eileen, oh. what's shaking? Good to see ya. You're a celebrity. You were on Gord's show. Yes, yes. Eileen was on Gord's show. Man, she's she is so awesome. Very positive energy. Uh, man, we got a lot of great people here in the video chat today. So we just want to say what's... Oh my gosh! 
Stop the presses. Those of you watching this on the replay, look over here towards the chat. You see that chat right there? Huh? Anthony's in the house. It's good to see you joining us, buddy. Like, it's like a reunion today. Um, hey, do us a favor, guys. Before we start going any further and talking a little bit about this content, hit that thumbs up. Come on, hit the thumbs up. Come on, Kelly, hit the thumbs up. Hit the thumbs up on the video. Give us some love. And of course, please keep the comments coming. We want to see you guys kind of interacting. Let's make this a community-based experience. UK is in the house. Yes. United Kingdom. We like to see our friends on over there. It's always great seeing you here. Um... And, of course, we want to thank our lovely moderator here. Kim here is going to be moderating things. She's still that nice little tool right next to her name. That means that she's able to kind of moderate comments. So we're watching out for the unsavory elements. And in the event that you want to insert some kind of a link, uh, we'll leave it up to Kim whether or not we'll post that link. So in any event, and, of course, Kelly's going to moderate as well. That's what she's looking down at, by the way. It's not that she is, you know, uh, scared to look into the camera. Actually, she loves the camera, right? Am I right? Hopefully I'm right as, in saying that. As long as my friends are in the room, yeah. I had to look at the monitor here. It's it's so it's so fancy. It's a new monitor, by the way, guys. Uh, some of your super chat, um, the previous super chats, has actually helped fund that. So please, by all means, those super chats, keeping them coming. This is the way that we are able to upgrade our live streaming capabilities. So let's get things rocking and rolling. Ebooks versus print books versus audio books. Before we start jumping into things. I want people, all right, you guys in the, the peanut gallery, I want to know who's going to win this battle. Who's better? Right this day, ebooks versus print books versus audiobooks. I don't care if you, you've got the information in front of you. I want to know which one of these is the best option, the most profitable option, if you will, or the the one that's the least profitable, or the one that doesn't show that much promise in the very near future. So let's get to the specific questions that I'm going to ask here. You ready for this? Kelly hasn't seen any of this, by the way. She just got out of the shower. She blow dried her hair. She did all this for you guys. So, which sells the most units per year? Kelly, well, how many do you think, uh, which one sells the most units per year? You know the answer because we talked about it at lunch, don't you? Yeah. And, and it's right there. <laughs> and it's, it's right in the show notes. So that's not fair. <laughs> it's not very fair. So, which sells the most units per year? I believed previously, because I'm a big person about print books, be it hardback or paperback. So, if I say print books, folks, I will largely refer to the mass market, paperback, softback type books, as well as the hardback. So, we're going to kind of lump those things in together. I thought previously that they would be the bulk of the units being sold, all right? And I was wrong. And actually, if you guys want the actual details... Keep in mind, this is not anecdotal. So there's two very good links, one by the Association of American Publishers, and that was released on October of 2017, the latter portion of the month. And there was also another one that was released by AuthorEarnings.com, and they give a really um, granular look at what's selling, how it sells, what specific you know types of books uh, so it really breaks it down. If you're in for a long read, you just go ahead and take a little look at that author earnings. So that's inside the description down below. So that way you guys know that we're not just spouting off a bunch of things that we think is going on. Uh, so in any event, um, to make me seem a little bit smarter, what sells the most per units per year? Well, it's ebooks. Ebooks wins it by a landslide. In fact, they make up well over 50% of units sold. Now, notice I say units sold. I didn't say the actual dollars. So that's not surprising, right? Why do you think ebooks sell more units per year than their counterparts of print books and audiobooks? People are always on their phone. People are always on their phone. And it's easier, not as much clutter. Yeah, agreed, agreed. In fact, actually, the most books I have is on the shelf over here. It's usually hidden back here. Um, by the way, I'm always accepting uh, new books, so if you guys ever feel like shooting one over towards me, I'd love to have that and put it up on my bookshelf. But nonetheless... And we have, like, you know, there's so many, you know, romance books. People just want to keep it hush-hush, so... Yeah, yeah, the, the erotica-style ones. Yeah, I, I, you know, it's it's kind of funny. Um, I think, you know, you say it's accessibility. Am I, am I right in saying that? I, I would think so and mm -hmm. ease of use and ease of use yeah for, uh, for me I, I mean i do ebooks because of its, its accessibility and the next thing is 
uh, it plays to the fact that I like saving money. Um, ebooks are far more uh, cost effective than what uh, the print predecessors are. Now, audiobooks are still cost effective um, and they're very consumable, especially like, for instance, when I'm working out, I like to put in a good audiobook. I'll, I'll get a couple of ones on Audible. I'll put it on 2X and literally like the fast paced reading for some reason kind of pumps me up and gives me the information pretty fast. Where'd you get this stat from again? I got it from uh, the Association of American Publishers as well as AuthorEarnings.com. So. And McKim says maybe because they're instant, that instant gratification. Instant gratification. That's so true. Because, I mean, if you're not buying at, say, Barnes & Noble uh, or going to any other brick-and-mortar style store, uh, you you get these ebooks much quicker. I mean, I just, I hit, you know, the buy now button on Amazon and it's there. Um, so, yeah, ebooks... Ebooks is there's a good reason why the units per year is much more. But um, let's go ahead. Let's let's take a look at this next stat. Which profits the most per year? Okay, so we just said ebooks for units per year. Um, what do you guys think is going to profit the most per year? Um, we've had a lot of people that have leaned a lot on Kindle publishing or ebook publishing, and we've got the verifiable proof. And the data backing it up, saying that those are more units sold. And and I apologize, unfortunately, I don't have the percentage. And I'm going to cover some of these percentages here as soon as I reveal this next little metric. Um, and uh, stay with me because we're going to even cover it even further in depth. And if you've been on previous pro um, previous live streams, you'll probably know some of these things because I've revealed this before. Um, but when it comes to profitability what's going to do the best now we already kind of know i think it's a spoiler hello audiobook is is not quite pulling its load but you gotta have to stay around because there's more metrics we got to kind of understand and get a deeper dive into this to to know what's trending and what's going to be the best uh, step so which profits the most per year kelly uh you can go ahead and give them a spoiler paperbacks it is print books it is print books yes so um let's go ahead and get get into a little bit more of the actual metrics. And I'm going to go ahead and save you guys a little bit of time. So here's the deal. You know ebook sells the largest amount between these three types of things. Um, to me, and I think that uh, one of my viewers has said this before, if not a, quite a few of them have said this, is look at ebooks kind of a way to advertise or um, to really be discovered with your, your brand. And, it, you know, those ebooks should be a way to advertise your print books or your audio books or your other books that you have. Um, because here's the thing is, you might sell more ebooks, but you're going to profit more in print books because here's the thing is, you're going to be able to mark up those prices just a little bit more because the expectations on how much someone's going to spend on ebooks are right about here. Whereas, most people are used to spending this much over in print books. Now, this is not me, me telling you to bargain basement drop your paperback to kind of get it to sell. Um, but anyway, here's the uh, actual data from our friends over at uh, the Association of American Publishers. Uh, according to the this past year, in 2017, the first part of it, they, that soft mass market paperback books, however you want to shake it, make it, or bake it, made about... 1.27 billion dollars in revenue okay that's a lot that means that's a lot everybody watching this stream if we were to split that that would be some fu money that's revenue or sales that is an actual excuse me sales so that might not be full net profit excuse me um we'll have to go back and look at the actual article um but nonetheless from the previous year in 2016 that actually was a 1.8 percent drop Okay, so that was a 1.8% drop. Not much. It's negligible. And then when you get into the billions, I mean, I think you're probably nickel and diming. Now, when it comes to hardback, this is where it's really awesome. They're at $1.1 billion, just a scope smaller than print books, but they saw a 9.7% increase in sales from the previous year. So that's telling us just a little bit we can assume, we can make assumptions here, and this is just me giving my opinion and my speculation that people are starting to fork up a little bit more money for those hardback books. So 
you need to kind of be thinking to yourself, okay, how can I be able to incorporate hardback books into my, my model? Now, um, I know I haven't done it yet. How have you done with hardbacks? Oh, crafty, so I haven't pursued it. So you haven't pursued it. So you, you tested it out, didn't you, over in Nook Press, maybe? Yes. Okay, so it didn't... Um, it was a very small sample. Yeah. Um, but I wasn't, based on their profits, um, I wasn't willing to give a bigger sample. So in other words, you weren't invested in it, so you just didn't put too much more time into just throwing it out there. I think I probably put four hours into it mm. when I learned the process, you know, designing, whatever. Mm. Maybe not, maybe two. Okay. But if I'm going to spend two hours in something and not get a penny, mm. I'm not willing to. And when I'm making money on CreateSpace, and I I didn't want to take my time away from CreateSpace. That's well put. If you, if you know that you're doing really well, it's, it's okay to dabble in things, but if you find that you're spinning your wheels, uh, it's best to probably double back around. Uh, in which format was that again? Was that on Nook Press? The hardback? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That was on Nook Press. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, there, there are other distributors as well that do the hardback options. You know, it's going to be up to you to do the due diligence and find out what's going to work out for you. Um, as far as ebook sales here, this is going to be shocking to some of you. At $555.7 million, not billion, million, um, it is down by 4.6% from the previous year in 2016. So this is a fairly market in, you know, um, drop because I believe their prior data, and I'm sorry, I'm trying to recall from memory, was nearly 5% as well. So that's, that's a consistent drop in ebook sales or ebook profits. Um, that might be indicative, though, of a larger um, uh, issue, which was, you know, what do we see a lot in fiction books? How are they usually priced? Well, the independent publishers, the independent price, publishers price them really low. Right. But you also have um, Kindle Unlimited, which right. probably takes away from some sales. K Kindle Unlimited as well, um, and I'm not sure if that metric is is taken into account. I know that in the author earnings article, they talked just a little bit more about um, Amazon and how they they account for the global profits. And uh, you'll want to take a look at that. But I know that it's nearly 50 percent of publication sales, which is pretty freaking crazy. Um, I thought it was 60% in, in previous reports, but I could be off on that one. Um, so, in any event, let's uh, move forward. Uh, which has seen the most growth in sales in units sold per year? Oh, I left one out. Oh, my goodness. So, hopefully, you guys have been kind of keeping, uh, taking notes here. Um, and before we do break into things, remember... Fire off those questions. You happen to be watching this on the replay. If you happen to be in the live stream, don't forget, hey, be kind. Click that thumbs up. Hit the super chat if you got any kind of questions or if you'd like to help support the cause. We definitely appreciate it. So um, let's go ahead and uh, before we answer this next question, what do we got kind of questions here inside the chat so far? I've worked it in as you were talking. That's perfect. That's perfect. Thank you. You guys are awesome. It's like we planned this whole thing together. Um, this, this is really fantastic. Um, so I uh, just want to let everybody know, thank you very much for all the support for the launch of the DIY Publishing Beta Launch course. It is officially closed. The doors are closed. So, um, you know, if you happen to put your name on the, the email list over at um, the landing page, unfortunately, the Publish with Dale landing page, I'm no longer accepting anybody inside the beta launch phase. So it's it's officially closed. Um, this was an, uh, not a marketing tactic. Uh, I want to thank anybody that actually invested their time, money, and attention into this program. And I promise to you that over the coming month, I'm going to send your eyebrows. Uh, so at any rate, uh, if you do uh, want to get some great information when it comes to uh, these live streams, you've come to the right place. Thursday, February the 8th at 6 p.m., we're going to be talking about CreateSpace versus KDP Paperback in 2018. The big changes that have happened on both the platforms, and we're going to be a little bit of speculative. We're going to talk a little bit. She's going to share a little bit of what she thinks, and I'm going to share a little bit of what I think, and we're hoping that you will show up and share what you think because if you show up, you're going to learn about a massive giveaway in self-publishing. I have partnered with about five people, or excuse me, five vendors in our line of work here in self-publishing, and they are willing to part ways with some of their services 
You're going to find out more details next Thursday. You don't want to miss out on this one. It is groundbreaking. And I'm going to tell you that this is cool. This is one of those times. I'm putting together this giveaway. It started out just as kind of like a thing between myself and another vendor. And go figure, it takes on a life of its own. And next thing I know, I'm on a video chats with quite a few other vendors. So it's going to be huge. I think I'm just going to have to quit this live stream so I can enter the giveaway because some of this stuff is stellar. It's going to take your business to the next level. And here's the cool thing. All you got to do is show up to the live stream next week and you're going to enter for that giveaway. It's going to be really, really cool. I promise you're going to love this stuff. And it's not like, you know, you need to spend any money to do the giveaway. No money necessary. No purchase necessary. All you got to do is just show up next Thursday, February the 8th. Hey, if you enjoy this content as well, make sure you go to selfpublishingwithdale.com slash sign up for full details about, um, uh, I give away some freebies, things like that. And also I'll give you, give you up-to-date information about what is coming up in the next streams, as well as important products, relevant news, and the world of self-publishing. Now, Alvaro just joined us and yeah. Ava thought it was 6.30. Ava thought... 6.30, Ava, inside the private group. Yes, that's right. Those inside the DIY publishing community, you guys get a private live stream tonight inside the private community. So make sure you guys join us after the stream. All right. So uh, what format do you think gets, gets the win here? You know, we want you to drop your thoughts in the comments. Really, please do that now. Which one gets the win? What do you think is the better of the, those? And listen, there's no wrong answer. This is opinion-based despite any of the data that I share with you right now. Uh, which one do you like better? I'm a fan of print. I love it even though I have more ebooks than I have print. What do you like? I like audiobooks because mm. I can listen to them while I work, but nothing beats getting up in the morning, having a cup of coffee, and a paperback book in your hand. Mm -mm -mm. I don't do go. it all the time, but it's really relaxing. So what do you guys think? It would definitely be great to hear from you as far as which of the three for it's easy for you to say, which of the three formats do you prefer? That is What was the answer e to our last question? Print books and audiobooks. Here we go. Oh. The answer to the question is which has seen the most growth in sales in units per year? It is audiobooks. So here's the deal, folks. I'm going to tell you just a little bit of anecdotal evidence. You're just going to have to go ahead and Google some of this stuff. Um, I should have been better prepared for this one. But I'll tell you at least based on the report that I got from this past year on the Association of American Publishers, audiobook, download, uh, downloadable audiobooks such as Audible or you know uh, iTunes, things like that, it saw $157 million. And you're kind of going whoop-de-doo, Dale, compared to $555 million or one point some odd billion that doesn't seem like much. Here's the deal. This is what's going to send your eyebrows. If you just grasp this concept, it saw a 32% increase in sales from the previous year. And over the past five years before that, it saw nearly, I think it was 48% over the last five years in actual sales. So they're starting to get a little bit of a trend. Now, Here's some really cool info, and I don't know if I told you this one. Uh, you might have heard this already, that Kobo is starting to partner with Walmart in coordination with audiobooks as well. Here's the really cool thing as well, and you can pay attention too to Apple. Apple's starting to take their audiobooks and compile those things with their ebooks. They're starting to really get behind these things. So if you can start to see a little bit of a trend, these companies are starting to see, oh my gosh, 32%. Now think about this, folks. How many of you listen to podcasts? How many? Hands up. Hands up. Who listens to podcasts? I listen to a lot. Between wrestling podcasts, self-publishing, to entrepreneur ones, podcasts are huge. It's, it's all about voice. It's voice. And when Gary V says voice is the future, I listen to him. Yes. <laughs> See, and, and this is a guy that it, that sees trends. And if you can look at patterns and start to see, hmm. Now, I'm not telling everybody that you abandon ebooks. I'm not telling you to just let your, your print books go on simmer and do nothing with them and just go all of a sudden to audiobooks. But you need to start incorporating this into your business model in some capacity. I realize that some of you don't have ACX 
at your disposal. You can't do the 50-50 royalty split. But realistically speaking, you can hire a good narrator for right about $50 to about $120, sometimes $1,200 per finished hour. So if you've got a very basic nonfiction book that's 10,000 to 20,000 words, it could run you about 50 to 100 bucks to get it completed. If it's less than that, look out. You got children's books? You know how simple that's going to be for you to produce an audiobook that you can own the actual audio content outright. If there was something that I would oh, I would do over again. By the way, we did this last week mistakes. I went deep on 50/50 royalty splits on ACX. If I did that over I, I do it over again, I would have just outright paid for the audio files. That would have made more sense to me because some of my books were just so short. She disagrees, but you know, nonetheless, That's I okay. would have paid for it outright because I, I found out, for instance, I, uh, I have a quotations book that does stellar. I've got a personal fitness or personal training fitness book out. It's, it's incredible. And like literally the time, the, the amount of money that I make per month could have just paid for that, that file outright. Now, of course, I'm sure if I try to go over and try to buy the rights from this guy, he's going to be like, ha, ha, no. Um, so in any event, that is, is really where we stand with audiobooks. And here's a very interesting one. And we had a good laugh about this quite a few months ago. There is actually a miscellaneous, there is a miscellaneous in here. And you're going to find out about that at the Association of American Publishers. And it includes things like board books, like the little children's board books. And believe it or not, there's still physical audio products going out in the form of cassettes and CDs. People are still purchasing these things. You ready for this? This is crazy. $181.8 million are made in the miscellaneous category, and it actually increased by 5.4% from 2016 to 2017. So miscellaneous is something worth entertaining. Um, you know, definitely think about that, especially if you buy those audio files. You can do some kind of a print-on-demand service through CreateSpace. They actually do CDs. So it's something to consider that you can look at distribution. Um, I did find some... Uh, graphic design artists fairly cheap over in Fiverr and you can get them to do all the artwork for you for the actual CD itself. Um, I'm not saying that it'll be profitable, okay? I haven't tried it, just saying it's an option. So that way you do know that there is an audience waiting, willing, and ready to go for that type of content. All right, so is there any other questions, comments, or concerns? Make sure you click that thumbs up, of course, and share this with somebody else who's into self-publishing. Uh, what's the chat say over here? Uh, it's nothing to do with the broadcast. Okay. Um, cool. Someone's still waiting for their... Julie Broad, what's going on? It's good to see you in here. All right. Uh, book launchers. She's, she's in the house. I was actually just talking about you, Julie, today. I was uh, speaking with uh, Chelsea Bennett over at Lulu uh, Press today. So, Lulu, big shout out to Lulu. It's uh, really awesome to be able to talk to Chelsea you guys get the opportunity, please uh, go over to Book Launchers. She's actually in the chat. Click on her little thing. Visit her channel. Click that subscribe. She's got great, high-quality content, and she's going to be going live here pretty soon. YouTube was being real weird with her. They're like, you know, they, they put like a freeze on her account, and, uh, and now she finally got it lifted, so we're going to be seeing some live streams. And also, uh, head over to Lulu Press. Click the um, subscribe on their channel as well. Great, high-quality content. Those two, I'm telling you, you want to really up your self-publishing game. you got to really not just focus on Dale and Kelly's live streams or the content that we're doing. you got to spread yourself out. Start to learn to other people. Because I know that my wife doesn't plug into what I'm training on. Do you? No. No. Where do you usually look? For what? Sorry, I was trying for to publishing. figure something out. Where do I look for publishing? Yeah. I just do my own thing. She, just, she does, does her own thing. She invents it. <laughs> so um, I see what you're, you're, you're focused on, and uh, I'll, I'll get that address when we get get off the live stream. So, well, uh, we're starting to get towards the end of things, um, and we do appreciate each and every single one of you coming and joining us for these live chats. Um, know this, that next week you don't want to miss things. Uh, we are going to be announcing the giveaway. Uh, five. Five big vendors in the realm of self-publishing have come to the table. I've got a sixth if not possibly seventh, eighth, maybe even a, a tenth person coming to the table. I skipped ninth, but you know, you guys get the idea. We're going to have a massive giveaway, and you don't want to miss out on this one because I'm telling you, it is literally like thousands of dollars of content I'm going to be giving away, and you're going to get details this next Thursday. In the meantime,
It's been Self-Publishing with Dale. And Kelly. And we're both going to see you next Thursday. <laughs>